Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about flying my ASW-20 on a 200 mile flight. A really great day for soaring. This will be my second year flying the ASW-20 and it's really a machine loved by all that fly it. This video was made during the COVID-19 crisis and you know a lot of us didn't really get to fly much in 2020. This flight was about three and a half hours total. Well, it's Saturday, and it looks like it's going to be a real nice soaring day. We've already got cumulus, and it's only about 12 o'clock. This is the Dallas sectional, and TSA is just south of Dallas, and you'll see it there on the right. We're just outside of Bravo airspace. So the flight started at TSA moving to the west, which is 70 miles to Stephenville. Then I turned south to go 50 miles to an airport in Hamilton, Texas. And the last leg was from Hamilton, headed uh, northeast, 80 miles back to the home base. This is the flight as shown on OLC. And you'll, you'll notice that the flight was between 4,500 and 8,000, with an average probably about 6,000 feet, nearly the entire flight. Really amazing day. One of the things we learn about flying gliders is we follow the clouds if we have them. And the other thing is we try to stay out of blue areas. And blue areas are just simply places where there's no clouds. We try to stay out of that. Well, it's Saturday and it looks like it's going to be a real nice soaring day. We've already got cumulus and it's only about 12 o'clock. So it should be a good day for flying. Okay, altimeter set. Radio is on. Spoilers check and locked. All right, let's go. You'll notice my left hand. I've got the flap set in a negative position to help for control at slow speeds. And then right there, I just put it in neutral, lift it off the ground, keep it on the deck, and allow us to climb out together. And when you're on tow, you cannot have any distractions whatsoever. You've got to keep that airplane in sight. It's extremely important. Okay, we're approaching release altitude. You want to definitely clear the area. It means look around, up, down, left, and right. Pull the release and we'll turn right to get away from the tow plane as soon as possible. You heard that clunk. You couldn't see my hand on it. But I put the landing gear in the closed position. Landing gear is up. So I'm heading to Stephenville. And I worked some thermals, this is some incredible thermals that got me over 7,000 feet. You'll notice on the display, my camera stopped a couple of times, so the sync is not perfect through the entire video. And it's real difficult to try to resync everything just right, so just take it with a little grain of salt on the uh, data that's, that's provided. All right, on this next clip here, I'm at Stephenville. It's still just an incredible flight. It just feels so good to the soul when you can stay up high on a cross country. That's for sure. Right on this next clip, we are at Stephenville, which was about 70 miles out. And we're headed south to Hamilton, Texas. There's a great airport there, really nice for a land out area. You can meet. I fly with an OD2 flight computer, that box there in the cockpit on the right hand side. And I also use a Nano as an additional backup. Alright, I'm high enough to continue flying basically in a straight line except following the clouds to deviate a little bit. So on this part of the flight, I'm not circling very much, but I'm, I'm climbing under those cumulus clouds. So we slow down in that lift. We speed up in sync and speed up faster in heavy sink. We want to get away from down air as much as possible and as quickly as possible. All right, looks like I'm coming up on Hamilton. Notice that red dot is almost to Hamilton at this point. So I've made it to my second destination at Hamilton. And again, here we are flying back to TSA, which is about 80 miles. And just what a great day. Uh, we all have these every once in a while, but this one was really outstanding for us down here in Texas anyway. 
you'll notice I'm slowing down underneath this cumulus cloud and I had to go to the right to follow the line of clouds down so it wasn't I wasn't coming back exactly in a straight line and you, and you don't generally you just want to stay out of the blue areas that means areas that have no clouds because those clouds tell you where the lift is all right you'll notice the red dot moving closer to our destination which is Texas Soaring Association TSA so I've really gained an, a lot of altitude at this point here and I'm getting very close to the final final glide which means we don't need any additional thermals to make it home estimating final glide I use a basic number I use eight miles per thousand feet of consumed altitude and that's just a, a rough estimate I can also use my flight computer and it can help me determine altitude necessary for final glide and, and including the, the speed in which I need to fly looks like I'm now about 20 miles out I'm going to work this last thermal here and then we'll get into final glide now I've been flying gliders now for about six years and flying the uh, TSA assets including the PW5 and the ASK21 and we also have a 126 to fly really just a lot of nice gliders to fly out here I've been flying the this 20 now for this is my second year of ownership and you know it's certainly a challenge just to have your own glider all right this time we're on final glide uh we've got sufficient altitude to make it back to tsa without any additional thermals plus a margin of error we like to arrive at least a thousand feet above the ground to get to the destination or the airport sometimes i'm more conservative and i'll be a little higher than that uh, but that's just the way i fly sometimes conservative I'm not in a race today. All right, the airport's probably about five miles out. I can see it. And what I've always been taught, if you can see it, you can probably make it. Hopefully. <laughs> that was one of my instructor's thoughts at one time. Looking real good here. Got my speed to over 105 miles per hour on final glide. Looking real good. Now we'll be setting up here for the landing approach. All right, I just put my landing gear down in the lock position. Always kind of think about that ahead of time. Use the checklist. I use a mental checklist for landing. I flew over the top center of TSA and that gave me a good look at the wind socks. Also, I'm looking out for traffic. Also have my landing gear down, have my flaps down at this point and we're working our way down. When we set up our approach, we, we speed up the glider, obviously, for control. I typically use about 60 knots as an approach speed. If it's a crosswind, it'll be a little bit faster. All right, let's just watch the remainder of the flight. you enjoyed this video and be sure and look up all my other videos about flying gliders including radio control model rocketry nasa and a lot more well thanks again and we'll see you in the air next time bye bye